so in the last videos i think we had a very clear discussion about uh, so what is our course content what we are going to discuss like uh, let me repeat for one or two minutes so the title of the course is logic based programming and this is the 12th batch okay logic based programming lbp number 12 the timings every day we will have a class at 8 pm monday to saturday okay maximum friday we will wind up if not saturday also we will take and the duration of this course is two months within two months we are going to finish this course and the number of programs which we are going to cover is 350 okay we are going to cover 350 plus programs and the languages which we are taking is c language java and also python so every program i am going to explain in all these three languages every program i am going to explain in these three languages and the fees for this batch is 2500 so including not low classes <laughs> live classes okay live classes recordings and running notes these things will be shared for you people and the demos yesterday one demo has happened today is another demo tomorrow last demo will be there so the regular classes we are going to start from monday so you people have to get registered on or before monday okay so the list of programs everything i explained in the last video you can watch that video will be there in our youtube channel and even we have explained one small application like a prime number or not how you can able to check whether the given number is prime number or not we have seen very clearly by taking some numbers so example logic everything we have seen and even sir we can implement that by using recursion also that part i will explain okay then first two program we have seen how to print a welcome message on the screen so second program how you can able to perform addition of two numbers also we have seen okay now you have to continue from third program but before moving to this i want to cover this prime number application by using recursion okay i want to cover that prime number application by using recursion okay prime number application sir how you can able to use this recursive mechanism very simple so here we have to depend on a function okay i am going to implement in java anyway in c language and python we are going to discuss in our upcoming classes so i am taking a function called is a prime which will take two numbers okay n and then i boolean is a prime function is going to take two numbers n and then i so if the value of i is equal to one then immediately you can return yes it is the prime number else you have to check whether n is divisible with i or not if it is divisible with i immediately you can return false else you can call the recursion like is prime of n comma minus minus i very simple sir sir here what is the value of i i value is nothing but n by 2 first i will explain by taking some example so that you can understand that. see here now consider n is equal to 6 i am taking listen carefully friends sir i is equal to what will be the value of i n by 2 6 by 2 means what so we are going to get 3 like this we are passing is i is equal to 1 no sir if n percentage i is equal to 0 is 6 is divisible with 3 yes then immediately false it is not a prime sir how many iterations we have taken only one iteration but if you implement this by using loop what we have to do you need to divide with one two so three four five six these many iterations you have to take which is not correct right so which is the best approach by using recursion i will take one more number listen carefully seven is it a prime number or not? yes what will be the value of i 7 by 2 means 3. Sir, is i is equal to 1? No. Is n is divisible with i? No. Then return prime of n we are passing as it is. i value will become reduced by 1 unit. So now i will become 2. 
now again 7 comma is i is equal to 1 no is n is divisible with i 7 is divisible with 2 no then again e is prime n i minus minus now i will become 1 sir is i is equal to 1 yes true it is a prime number how many iterations sir three iterations if you take a loop how many iterations we are going to take so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 have you observed seven iterations which is correct this one let us take one more example n is equal to 100 if you implement by using looping statement how many iterations you have to take 1 to 100 that means 100 iterations you have to take apply loop sir what will be the i value n by 2 that is nothing but a 50 sir is i is equal to 1 no is n is divisible with i yes so return false it is not a prime number how many comparisons only one have you observed the difference like that we can check whether the given number is a prime number or not by using this recursion recursive algorithms are very fast when compared with iterations okay sir clear friends up to this please confirm everyone Uh, yes. Right. Requesting every student to please respond. right now i want to implement this code sir okay i want to implement this code so let us see how you can able to implement this code so here i am going to read the data from the user like a scanner obj is equal to new scanner of system dot in then integer n is equal to obj dot next int so what they are expecting true or false right so we will implement a function okay system dot out dot print ln of is prime of n comma uh, n by 2 like this i am taking so here you have to define a function static it is going to return boolean e is a prime which will take n comma i so what is the first step if i is equal to one we have to return two else if uh, uh, n percentage i is equal to zero then we have to return false else what we have to do return e is a prime of n comma minus minus i that's all by using recursion we implemented this algorithm Yes, you can see all the three test cases are satisfied and even the code executed. How you can able to execute this? In the last video, I explained very clearly. Okay, if you observe, in the last videos, we have seen in detail about this. Okay, sir, that's all. This is nothing but what we have discussed in the last video, just that pending application. Anyway, perfect number program, tomorrow I will explain. And the program one we have solved program 2 we have solved now let us take program number 3 sir what is the third program here we have next integer okay so implement a program that takes a number and uh, that takes a number as an input and increment that number by plus 1 and print the result we have to increment that number by one unit and we have to print the result okay sir how you can able to do this example if you take for example if input is 2 my output is nothing but 3 if input is 5 sir output what i am expecting 5 plus 1 that is nothing but a 6 okay if input is 1 1 plus 1 2 so what is the logic for this very simple we have to read n value from the user okay we can print that incremented value 
we can print a incremented value but make sure in c language and java we can use n plus plus for incrementing but in python we don't have any increment operator we have to increment like this n is equal to n plus 1 like this only we have to take okay so because in python we don't have any increment and decrement operators okay i hope you people got very clear clarity about this sir can you please confirm if it is clear i will go with implementation everyone okay. please confirm is it clear yes sir yes sir right so let's go for implementation in c language of this program third program program number 3 yes now you can able to see sir test cases if you observe one if input is 1 output is 2 if input is minus 1 output is 0 i am implementing the program in c language integer n i am taking so scan f percentage d comma ampersand n i am taking so n plus plus we have to increase the value of n by 1 unit and the percentage d comma i am taking n that's all run the code perfectly working and submit the code you can see all the test cases are worked here now i need to take java implementation let us see how we can work with java so how to implement in java i am taking scanner obj is equal to new scanner of i am taking system dot in then integer n is equal to obj dot next int we have to take then as usual n plus plus because we have increment operator is there and after that i am printing n run the code perfectly working and submit the code yes it is working fine this is nothing but how you can able to implement in java so i need to implement in python i told already in python we don't have any increment and decrement operators right that's why there may be an issue okay suppose let us read n value from the user and try to do this first we will check really whether it is there or not so you can see here it is telling one error message saying uh, the statement which you have taken is wrong okay the statement which you have taken is wrong like that it is telling okay so what we have to do in such cases just you have to replace with our code n is equal to n plus 1 and submit the code that's all you can see all the test cases are working properly so hope you people got very clear clarity about python implementation can you please confirm any doubts in this code sir everyone no sir all clear right so next program program number 4 sir what happened for remaining people you people are sleeping please respond because uh, i told already how much important this class is okay please respond everyone use chat window also Clear, sir. Right. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep. <laughs> so next program divisible by 3 so we have to check whether a number is divisible by 3 or not if it is divisible by 3 we have to print yes otherwise no if you take example 
if you give 3 as a input is it divisible by 3 yes if you give 4 as a input is it divisible by 3 no if you give 5 as a input is it divisible by 3 no if you give 6 as a input is it divisible by 3 yes that's all these answers they are expecting what is the logic sir very simple we have to read n value from the user we have to read n value from the user and if uh, n percentage 3 is equal to 0 if you divide a number with a uh, 3 percentage division that means reminder then we have to print then we have to print yes else we have to print no. like this we have so let us go with c language implementation how it is going to work let us go with the c language implementation how it is going to work so program number four right i think these programs are not there just one second i will add these programs one second i will add Right, I have added the challenges. Let us refresh. Yes, program number four, you can see. So we have to read a number and check whether it is divisible by three or not. So three means output is yes, four means output is no, five means output is no, like this. So how to implement in C language? Integer, we have to read the number. Okay, after this, just I am going to check the condition. What is that condition? Printf. If um, that n percentage 3 is equal to 0 means already I explained this. We have to print yes, otherwise no. This is called as conditional operator. So, what is the condition here? n percentage 3. If it is equal to 0, we have to print yes. Otherwise, we have to print. Let us run the code. Perfectly working. And submit the code. Yes, you can see all the test cases are working. Sir, what about Java? In Java also same thing. Only that the syntaxes and the semantics are going to be changed. So scanner obj is equal to new scanner of I am taking system.in. Uh, then integer n is equal to obj dot next int I am taking. Okay. So after this, what we have to do? System dot out dot print ln of if n percentage three is equal to zero, then I have to print. Sorry, I have to print yes. Otherwise, I have to print no. That's all. And submit the code like this. We have. And I want to implement in Python. Let us go for Python implementation and let us see how it is going to be solved in Python. So first I want to print yes when if n percentage 3 is equal to 0. Otherwise I want to print the message saying no. 
let's run the code so perfectly it is working and submit the code you can see here all the test cases are working properly so i hope you people got a very clear clarity about this sir okay yes sir can you please confirm do you have any doubt in this implementation please confirm friends no doubt no, sir right so what is the next program that we have here is program number 5 number of hours implement a program to read a seconds value from the user and convert it into hours sir per hour how many seconds will be there 3600 3600 seconds will become 1 hour so they have given seconds value we have to convert it into hour sir very simple suppose if they have given 3600 seconds then it will become 1 hour okay so if they are giving 3700 seconds no problem it will become 1 hour only what is the logic for this first we have to read seconds value seconds value from the user and what we have to print we have to print seconds by 3600 if it is in normal languages if it is python double slash we have to take let us go for implementation of this program program number 5 right Three thousand six hundred means one, so fifty six thousands means fifteen hours, something like that. We are getting. So first we have to read seconds value from the user. Scan f, percentage d comma ampersand seconds. Now what we have to do? Percentage d comma that seconds divided by three thousand six hundred. That's all right. So let's run the code. Perfectly working and submit the code. so you can see here all the test cases are working properly this is the way how you can able to implement in c language i want to go for java implementation let us see how we can able to do this in java so i am taking scanner obj is equal to new scanner of system dot in Uh, obj dot we have to read integer value then what we have to do seconds divided by three thousand six hundred that's all let's run the code is it working perfectly working and submit the code you can see here all the test cases are satisfied this is the way how you can able to implement in java so i want to go for python implementation let us see how it is going to work in python so seconds is equal to int of input i am taking then print of seconds divided by 3600 that's all right but we should not take single slash if you take single slash what will happen you are going to get the result in point representation i don't want this just to take double slash you can able to see here all the test cases are satisfied here so like this we can do okay so i hope uh, you people got a very clear clarity about this can you please confirm do you have any doubts up to this no sir no sir no doubt sir right so here you can able to see uh the next challenge is number of months we have to implement a program to read number of days and uh, convert it into number of months we have to read number of days from the user and we have to convert it into number of months consider 30 days are there per month like this they have given because some uh, some months will be having 31 something like that right 
but they have given a common criteria that consider 30 days are there per month okay now sir how you can able to implement for example if the given data is 30 so the output what we are expecting is one month if the data is 60 two months if the data is 90 three months okay so something like this we have to take what is the logic behind these first we have to read days okay read days value then we have to print so days divided by 30 right that's all let us go for implementation sir except in python in the remaining you can use a slash mm, program number six right So write integer days percentage d comma ampersand days I am taking and printf percentage d comma days divided by 30. Let's run the code. Perfectly working and submit the code. Yes, all the test cases are working properly. Now I want to take um, Java implementation. How it is going to work in Java? We have to see now. So scanner obj is equal to new scanner of system dot in integer days is equal to obj dot next into we have to take and the direct line printing system dot out dot print ln of days by 30 that's all right let's run the code and let's submit the code so you can see all the test cases are working perfectly this is the way how you can able to implement in java and let's go for python implementation and let us see how it is going to work in python so days is equal to int of input so we should not take days by 30 you know very well in the last program itself we have faced that issue that's why i'm taking days double slash 30 yes working perfectly right sir everyone please confirm is it clear now yes yes sir right so the next application what we have here three numbers addition it is also very simple code you can see implement a program to accept sir it is very very important because from this program you are going to learn one new concept so write a program to accept three space separated integers and print addition of those three numbers sir seems to be like addition program but twist is there one two three output what they are expecting is a six one 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 means output they are expecting is three so what is the logic very simple we have to read a value comma b value and c value from user then we have to print a plus b plus c sir the implementation is very easy in c language and java okay but in python a bit tricky program we have to write so here i am taking integer a comma b comma c so scan f percentage d percentage d percentage d am present a comma am present b comma am present c and i need to print the result saying a plus b plus c now let us run the code perfectly it is going to work and submit the code like this we have and let us go for java implementation and let's see how it is going to work in java how to implement in java have a look once 
so scanner obj is equal to i am taking new scanner of system dot in so integer a is equal to as usual you can read next int and b is equal to obj dot next int and c is equal to obj dot next int like this then what we have to do system dot out dot print ln of okay a plus b plus c i have to take let us run the code perfectly it is working and submit the code sir in python it is very different now listen carefully that is very very important so in python you can't read directly in a single line you can't read individual values by using single line if you take um, a is equal to input okay so input means it is going to read the data in the form of a string sir here in the left hand side we have to capture three values that's why here we have to go with a new concept called tuple packing okay so it is going to take like this anyway in future classes you will get in detail but here just i will explain how it is going to work okay sir first i will execute the code then i will give explanation okay sir what is this code how it is going to work very simple listen carefully uh, have you observed whatever data you are giving input data it will be in the form of string like for example if i am giving 1 2 3 like this it will read in the form of string now i am splitting this i am splitting this if you split what will happen this will become first string second string third string separated by space for each i value okay for each i value in this that means first time this one second time this one third time this one can you please convert it into integer yes first number one second number two third number three try to store this uh, in a tuple try to store this in a tuple like this we have sir in the left hand side i have taken a comma b comma c is equal to okay in the left hand side so i have taken so a comma b comma c like this so means what this first value is going to copy to a second value is going to copy to b third value will be copied to c this is called as tuple unpacking this is called as tuple unpacking okay tuple unpacking like this we have so this is called as a tuple in python especially python students can understand this okay so i hope uh, you people got a very clear clarity about this i will i will uh, save this diagram uh, with the name tuple unpacking right sir clear up to this please confirm everyone clear up to this please confirm everyone yes sir right so that's all about today's session tomorrow will be uh, the last class so from then we are going to learn how how we are going to practice this program